for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Welcome to our video tutorial series on the basics of CSS. In part two of this series, what we're going to talk about is the basic format of a style. Now, there are three different locations that a style can be. Styles can be either inline, internal, or external. For the purposes of this course, we're going to be working with external style sheets. But everything you learn here about how to format and write styles will apply equally as well to internal style sheets as well as the external style sheets. However, inline styles are a little bit different. And you'll see in another video how to write inline styles in uh, CSS. So you can see here, I've got my HTML document open. And I also have the style sheet that's associated with that HTML document open. And you'll see they're both in the same directory right now. And I've attached this style sheet to this HTML page. And I actually did that with Dreamweaver. Later on, you're going to see a video of how to actually write that in HTML. But you can see by going to the basic HTML page on line 5 here, I have the link to my style sheet. I have the actual link right here, the type of link it is, and uh, or the relationship between this document and the other document, and the type of style sheet that it is. It's a text CSS sheet. Now, coming back here to my external style sheet, there are three different types of basic styles in CSS. And they are class styles, tag styles, and ID styles. Now, regardless of whether it's a class style, a tag style, or an ID style, they have the same basic format. And I'm going to go ahead and write one of each of these styles for you. We'll start off with a tag style. A tag style in CSS simply modifies an existing HTML tag, like h1, h2, p, so on and so forth. So let's say I want my heading, my main heading, to look different. I'm going to go ahead and start off by naming the style the same as the tag, in this case h1. And then I'm going to go ahead and do an open bracket, an open curly bracket. And when I do that, it's actually going to give me a shortcut menu here. And that's a feature that's specific to Dreamweaver, another reason why I'd recommend that you at least download the trial and give it a shot. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And you're going to see I'm tabbed in here a little bit. And I want to change two things about um, my H1. I want to change the font, and I want to change the color. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Font Family. Now, the tag here is known as a CSS selector. It's a selector because it selects the item that the CSS style is going to modify. Font family is an example of a CSS property. Basically, what I'm saying here is go select all the occurrences of H1 and apply the font family property. If I type a colon after font family, Dreamweaver will bring up a property sheet for me. Now, I can go ahead and type whatever properties I want in here, but just as a time saver, I'm going to select Arial here. At the end of my property value statement, and remember, this is the property part, and this is the value of that property, you're going to end it with a semicolon. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And I'm going to go ahead and enter in another CSS property called Color. Color allows me to change the font color. And again, after I type the colon that separates the property name from the um, value, I get this shortcut menu. I'm going to go ahead and select Color here. And you're going to see I get a color spectrum. I can even come here and choose any color that I want. And for the sake of our um, example, I'm just going to select red right here and click OK. And you're going to see that the hexadecimal value for that color is inserted into um, 
that style. Later we're going to talk about how you denote these colors in CSS. And then I'm going to go ahead and type a semicolon because that property value statement has been completed. I'm going to hit enter again and I'm going to do a closing curly bracket. And you'll see Dreamweaver indents me back out a little bit there. So again, we have a selector and then a space. The selector says go find every occurrence of this tag. Then I have an opening curly bracket which indicates the beginning of my style. Then I have one or more property value statements. And the property is the name of the element that you wish to modify. In this case, I want to modify the font. The value is what value you want to set that property to. In this case, it's Arial. In the second CSS property value statement, you can see I have color, which is the property, and then the code that identifies what that color is. And then finally, when I'm finished with entering in my property value statements, I close my style with a curly bracket. I'm going to go to File and Save. And when I come back to Basic HTML and go into Design View so I can actually see it, you're going to see that that was modified. Now let's go ahead and do it with the Level 2 headings there. I'm going to go back into Code and you'll see there's an H2 heading right there. So I'm going to come back to my CSS styles and I'm going to go ahead and change something about the H2 style. So I'm going to go ahead and H2, this is a tag style, so I identify the tag and then I do an opening curly bracket. Remember, don't do a square bracket there and don't do a parenthesis. Those are two common uh, mistakes people make early on in writing CSS do a curly bracket. You know you did it right because these, property val or these properties come up. I hit enter once to move myself down and I'm going to select font family as the property and again I'm going to select Arial. And then I'm also going to change the color of this H2. And this time instead of going to my pinwheel I'm just going to select the red from right there and then I'm going to close my curly bracket and I've successfully created a second style. I'm going to go to File and Save and when I come back to my HTML document and go into Design View you'll see my heading, my main level 1 heading. And you'll also see my level 2 heading is now being affected in all locations. We also have a third level heading here and let's go ahead and finish that off by coming back into styles and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy this and then paste it in again and then simply change the H2 to H3 so now I have three tag styles to format my different heading levels and again, I'm going to save this. Another shortcut is right-clicking right on the tab and selecting Save. You don't have to go to the uh, File menu all the time. Then I'm going to come here to Basic HTML, and you're going to see that these third level headings now have been affected as well. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high-definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.